I want to talk with you today about a characteristic that's rather difficult for us to get into because it has such an edgy feel to it. And it's one of these characteristics that nobody wants to have associated with themselves. It's the trait of cowardice. Do you ever think of a narcissist as having cowardly tendencies? Now, often we think of uh, cowardice in the, uh, in the context of physical peril. Uh, let's say there's some sort of disaster that may be there or in the battle scene, something like that. And the person that has cowardice, rather than moving in and trying to be a part of the assistance or part of the helpfulness, they take off and run for the hills and, and fear overwhelms them to the extent that they leave people in the lurch and they do no one any good favors because fear has so gripped them. Well, in the psychological context, we're going to have conflict. And we're going to have stress and strain. A, a person who responds psychologically with cowardice uh, can fit the definition that says uh, cowardice is the lack of courage to confront or to step into difficult or potentially painful circumstances. You know, when you have an ongoing relationship with someone, whether it's someone that you work with on a uh, regular basis or social settings or extended family or your partner or your children, there, there's just going to be some moments where it's not very pleasant and you have to sit down and, and talk things out or you have to confront some difficult situations and challenges. Healthy people say, okay, they told me that this day was going to come and here we are. Where do we need to go? How do we need to proceed? How can I be a, a part of the healthiness that we're going to apply to this? Let's figure this out. The cowardly individual is like, no, that, that makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't like that. I don't, I don't want to have pain. And so they'll do anything and everything except go in to that situation in a constructive way. Now, interestingly, Narcissists, initially anyway, can come across as smug and very self-assured and, and uh, they've got all their opinions and ideas about how things are going to go, or at least they give the impression that they're above some of the stress and strain. But beneath the surface, make no mistake, these individuals are driven by fear. Remember, one of the things that I talk about is the false persona that uh, narcissists maintain. They want you to think that they're superior and they're above everything and they can be in control, they should be in control, when in fact beneath the surface is a little boy or a little girl who's learned that the world is an unhealthy or an unsafe place, at least to them, or an, an uninviting kind of place, and they have to be on top of it at all times. Now, let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, just some uh, some illustrations. I've had uh, so many people talk to me about when uh, a difficulty comes up inside a family or a, uh, a friendship, that cowardly narcissist is just nowhere to be found. Uh, for example, I've talked with people that there's been a death in the family or there's been uh, a, a real difficult situation with respect to you know some sort of a, a controversial thing inside the, uh, the family. And the, the cowardly person's like, I don't like to get into that kind of stuff. That, that just makes me feel uncomfortable. And so they just, they, they, they just no shows with stuff like that. Or other people, they kind of go in the opposite direction when a strain or a difficulty comes along and we really need to sit down and talk this thing through in a very clear way. These individuals in their cowardice, they, rather than saying, okay, I'm, I'm in, let's figure this out. They, they, they're they extremely disruptive, and it's their way of saying, if there's a problem, I'm not going to let anybody insinuate that I'm part of the problem, and, and they make it all about themselves, and in doing so, uh, they just make it worse, and it's their fear of, of being pinned down or found out that, uh, that drives them to be a distracting feature inside that conflict. Or another one, and this is a really rough one, when there's already a problem, let's say there's been a divorce or uh, a business breakup or a, uh, a, a friendship that didn't go well, then the person who has cowardice can take the situation and make it worse by pulling in innocent people uh, to their side, so to speak, and, and making other individuals look badly. For example, in uh, uh, one, a very common thing that I see is uh, in divorce, uh, we have parental alienation where one parent hates the other parent, and so they teach the children to hate that person, or they, they go and do a smear campaign about the other person behind their back. That's cowardice. Why, why do you need to do that? You know, in a healthy situation, you could say, well, okay, unfortunately, we, we got a divorce. We had a breakup. Let's at least uh, take care of the situation in front of us in such a way where other people aren't hurt 
uh, along with it. They can't do that. It's like, I have to win. And if I've got to bring other people down with me, so be it. That's what I'll do. Or it could be that, uh, that there's a, a soft or a tender situation that requires some attention. Maybe somebody's really struggling and hurting and, uh, and you need to make personal sacrifices to help that person. The, the coward says, nah, I just don't like those kind of things. That makes me feel icky. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. So they run for the hills. So there are many, many different uh, ways that cowardice can play out in relationships. And I'm going to run through several other kinds of indicators of cowardice inside um, the narcissistic way of life. And keeping in mind, this is all of their need to be in control and that shows a, a lack of empathy. Uh, one thing I've already mentioned uh, that's an illustration of this cowardice is the disappearance in personal, uh, in, in conflict situations. They, they just can't do it. Or another indication of cowardice is sometimes they'll take pot shots uh, 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 behind your back and as opposed to standing in front of you and having a good, healthy face-to-face uh, -face dialogue. It's like, now, what I want to do is I want to win in the, in the uh, 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 public opinion polls. And so if I can get other people on my team against you, I'll leave out a few uh, crucial ingredients here, a few uh, crucial facts. And so they'll just run you uh, in the ground behind your back. Another way that people can show cowardice is they, they can just have an ongoing pattern of being coy or evasive in general. You never quite know where you stand with these individuals. Cowardly individuals are constantly trying to maintain their position so that they can see where the exit is if they have to go there. Now, another act of cowardice is that of bullying. I want you to think of a boss or a parent or a coach who uh, has to have their way and they've, they've got to have everything line up exactly the way they say. And if individuals in front of them don't comply, they just come down with a hammer. They're mean and they're harsh. They can't sit down and say, okay, we have several different uh, personalities in the room here. We have several different ways of looking at things. Why don't we pull our uh, thoughts together and see if we can come up with some sort of consensus? No, cowardly individuals won't listen to other individuals. They'll just blow people out of the water and it's like, yeah, look at me. I am now a somebody. When in fact, it's their fear. It's their fear of diversity. It's their fear of stretching that causes them to be this way. Now, another variation of that, another illustration of cowardice, is sometimes cowardly individuals, they're, they're kind of like that little kid that hides behind mother's skirts. Uh, they want to associate themselves with people who have the power. And so cowardly individuals will seek out people that are overbearing or strong-willed, or they're the ones that are at the top or in charge. It's like, I'm on that person's team. You can't mess with me now. And, and it, uh, it implies that to them, relationships are a competition. It's a game. Who's going to be on top? Uh, many times you'll see people who have cowardice, they, they refuse to stand up for other individuals who might be uh, mistreated or who are misunderstood. It's like, hey, that's their problem. And they let other individuals hang out there on their own without any kind of assistance whatsoever. Um, uh, many times uh, they will uh, go into diversionary tactics if you try to talk with them about some things, they'll uh, take the topic off to something else or they'll blame shift and they'll uh, tell you, well, if you've got, you think I have problems, you have more problems. The cowardly individual just can't stand there and or sit there and say, let's just talk. Or another illustration of cowardice is when someone is down, there's no compassion. It's like, too bad. <laughs> now, when they're down, they want everybody to pay attention. But when someone else is down, it's like, you're not going to get any kind of good attention from me. I don't like doing that. I'm uncomfortable. Sometimes the cowardice is displayed through ridicule and mocking and condescension. So you can see that uh, there's all of this is driven by fear. All of this is driven by the need to maintain a certain uh, persona that says I'm impenetrable, when in fact, <laughs> they're deeply insecure individuals. So let's see if we can get a handle on what's really going on here. And I, I want to go to a phrase that you've probably heard, but it's very pertinent for us to understand uh, how this relates to that cowardly individual. And it's the phrase, hurt people, hurt people. When narcissists take on this cowardly persona, and when they uh, have all of these kind of deeds, and you could probably add a few more of your own, uh, that shows that they're in this fear and uh, run for the hills kind of a mindset, 
they're illustrating that they're, they're hurting on the inside. They're filtering their own unresolved pain uh, and, and, um, and that's what's driving some of their decisions. They're, they're fixated, they're stuck in uh, childhood difficulties that they've never come to terms with. And as a result, their, their own misery continues to, uh, to guide and to, uh, to uh, show the way in terms of the way that they deal with you. They just assume this is not going to go well. I've got to just go into um, protective mode. Being hurt themselves, they hurt other individuals. And then it also illustrates that uh, because of that, they're woefully incapable of accessing any form of empathy. Uh, and you'd, you'd think the opposite if, they, if they've been hurt that they could empathize with somebody, but they have no empathy. Instead, they have anger, they have insensity, uh, insensitivity toward you. But keep in mind, it's a displacement of their own inner unresolved strain and tension. Now, when somebody shows this kind of cowardice toward you, you want to go over and shake them and say, come on, be an adult here, will you? Or take responsibility, will you? But keeping in mind, uh, they're, they're not in that place. They're going to run for the hills every time. They're, they're just simply not able to have that adult-like engagement with you. So it, it implies one very strong uh, thing for you, and that is you're going to need to individualize your own uh, responses as you figure out how you're going to deal with this person. Don't expect them to be a team member. Uh, you're going to have to figure out what is it going to take for me to be a healthy person, even if that other individual chooses not to. So when a cowardly narcissist hides or runs away or does all of these diversionary uh, tactics, you're going to have to uh, come to terms with the fact there's got to be one person in this equation who needs to be courageous, and it looks like it's going to be me. I hope you're up to that task, and I hope that you can overcome some of these uh, improper patterns that the narcissist wants you to join uh, with them on. It's like, nope, I, I'm, I'm going to stand firm. I, I'm going to have a sense of decency as I engage with my public. Now, I do hope that you find value in videos such as this, and it uh, spurs insight uh, and stimulates your thinking for you. In fact, if you uh, have a need to unpack some of this stuff with a, uh, with a counselor, we've vetted a group, and we have a link below uh, with uh, an online counseling service. Uh, and in and, and, and this day and age, online is where people are wanting to go. So uh, I would encourage you, if you need to do that, go beneath, and you'll find that link there. We also have uh, links to our, uh, our website, survivingnarcissism.tv. Also my website, drlescarter.com. We have links to my online video workshops and books and, uh, and even coffee mugs. I hope that as you see other individuals act in their cowardly ways, that it stimulates you to be a person of confidence, resolve, and strength. And in doing so, you're setting a model worthy of being followed. I think that's a good way to go, don't you?